We're halfway through 2022, so I thought I would count down my top 10 couples from the first half of 2022. Jumping right into this, I had mixed feelings about this couple and I didn't know if I should put them in this list, but I had to. It's Villanelle and Eve from Killing Eve. And I had to because I love them. It was an amazing slow burn storyline. I am just ignoring the last 20 minutes of the episode, right? Wasn't even last 20 minutes. It was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> of the finale. So we're just ignoring how the series ended and enjoying it from what it, it was beforehand. And I feel like, I mean, it, they probably would have been higher on the list if we'd spent more time in season four with them together. I think there was missed opportunities there, but clearly they had their, their priorities elsewhere. But I did have to keep them on the, my list because I've been following their storyline since like the first episode and I absolutely love Villanelle and Eve. So they're number 10 on my list. Coming in at number nine is Lake and Lucy from Love, Victor. I'm hardly perfect. Um, my right boob is a tiny bit smaller than the left. Perfect to me. These two were adorable. My biggest issue was there was like hardly any screen time. I wish there was more screen time with them. Uh, outside of that though, they're, uh, I don't know, they're really, really cute and I love them. I, they're just really cute, you know? <laughs> so Lake and Lucy from Love, Victor are coming in at number nine. Number eight on my list is Ryan and Sophie from Batwoman. I love Ryan and Sophie. They have so much chemistry and it's that, it's like Villanelle and Eve, but they have like, you know, that great sort of slow burn. It was like a two season slow burn. Um, and it was really, really good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed their storyline. Obviously, biggest issue is we don't have any more seasons to, to watch their gorgeous storyline. Oh, the CW, the CW pissed me off. <laughs> But I love seeing that, like, even though we didn't necessarily get to see all the backstory, there was mentions that, like, Sophie was even, like, crushing on Ryan before everything, right? Like, when she was, you know, getting in trouble with the law and, like, she was having run-ins with Sophie then. You know, we didn't see a lot of that, of that backstory, but I like that they mentioned that Sophie had a crush on her even back then. <laughs> so Ryan and Sophie come in at number eight on my list. Number seven, I have Lucy and Kate from NCIS Hawaii. I love Lucy and Kate, and I think they have amazing chemistry, and goddamn, that height difference is mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> the biggest issue I have with them is like, the nature of the show, it, you know, it doesn't lend to a lot of like screen time dedicated to like, um, relationships and character conflicts necessarily. You know, it's like a serial drama. There, there. It's a cop show. There's, you know, a, a crime every episode that needs to be solved, and so there's a lot of sort of time spent on that, which obviously understandable. So I would love to, you know, in a perfect world, see more of them. And we had half the season of them like being mad at each other. <laughs> But I love how we ended the season with them. And so I'm really excited to see where they go in season two. So number seven is Lucy and Kate from NCIS Hawaii. Coming in at number six is sort of a new couple to this year. Rayelle and Scylla from Motherland Fort Salem. I love you, Rayelle. And I would never do anything to hurt you. I love you. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm putting in them at number six sort of based on like, previous seasons and I don't know if that's fair but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> We're only three episodes in from Motherland Fort Salem season three for this year right? Rayelle and Zilla have been broken up for two of those episodes right? <laughs> and unfortunately I think they're gonna be broken up for quite a little while because I believe the actress that plays Rayelle had an accident during filming and so she was recovering for a lot of it. I, I do think they're gonna probably be separated a lot in season three again, which was the one thing that I was hoping they wouldn't be because it feels like they've been separated a lot in the last couple seasons as well. But when they're together, they are gorgeous. They're so soft and so, oh, they're just so cute, you know? <laughs> I, I just, oh, they're so cute. I just, I love them. <laughs> They make you believe in love. <laughs> so yeah, that's why that's why I had to put Ray Allen Silla number six. I mean, even just like from, I think it was episode two, 
where Scylla was wanting to like just run off, like steal one of the boats with Rael and just run off together and go to the lighthouse. And they were just so soft and cute. I, ugh, I love them. <laughs> so they're number six on my list, Rael and Scylla from Motherland Fort Salem. Into our top five now and coming in at number five is Candace and Lily from Astrid and Lily Save the World. This is a new season and we still haven't heard if season two has been renewed yet from sci-fi, but the show was really dorky in a great way. Candace and Lily were really cute. Like I really, really loved their, their storyline, their the chemistry was great. They were just like, it's a really cute couple. And like, I would have loved to see them when I was in high school. You know, I think seeing that relationship really would have meant heaps to me even though the show is like really dorky and all that sort of stuff it's i don't know i just i loved the different sides of the the popularity groups coming together and then crushing on each other and just i yeah i i love them i they're really really cute <laughs> Coming in at number four, we have Shelby and Tony from the wilds. I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like my top four, they could probably be juggled around. Like I was struggling on where I should rank them all, but I, I settled in at, at number four. I feel like mostly because of how we ended because they're not together, but you know, they're end game. I believe that wholeheartedly. <laughs> They have so much chemistry, like so much chemistry. I just would like to see more of them. The issue like this season that we had, a lot of screen time was taken up by the boys storyline. And then it's just, ah, there was a lot of issues I had with the actual sort of like storyline this past season, which I think got in the way a little bit. And there was a lot of things that I guess we skipped or kind of like brushed over really quickly because obviously, introducing six seven however many more characters into the show reduces screen time but you know there was a lot of things like shelby coming out to the group and all that sort of stuff that we really didn't get to see it was just kind of like okay great it is now what it is <laughs> and considering like how traumatized she's been about her sort of like sexuality in the past and like her storylines from season one I, it just kind of felt like they brushed over a little bit so i think that's why i put them at number four even though i absolutely love them their chemistry is off the charts i i had to put them in at number four you know it's the writer's fault <laughs> i also put in brackets liam fatten because i had to mention them even though they're not canon and they're not technically a couple i just love them <laughs> So I had to mention them. <laughs> and number three, I have Anne Anne from Gentleman Jack. I love Gentleman Jack and I, I stopped doing reaction videos to them because like I liked just sitting with the show. Like, I, I don't know, like reacting to it felt like it took away the show from me and I was kind of just enjoying it all. And I honestly really liked the sort of the business side of Anne's storyline. Like outside of, you know, Anne and Anne. Typically, you know, I watch shows for couples, but I really loved learning the sort of history of Anne um, Lister and her businesses and just like her mind is insane. So I stopped doing reaction videos for that reason because I just kind of wanted to sit and enjoy the, the show. And it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying the show at all because I love them so much. And I, I love that we get to see that they're not perfect people, you know, like they're, they have a lot of faults and we see those faults. Um, but we also see them come together and we see them standing by each other. And I just, yeah, I really, I really love I'm so mad about the news we got yesterday that HBO um, has decided to cancel the show and won't be coming back for a season three. That has made me so mad. Ugh. So I'm gonna have to just like jump into all the books that are available because like I said, I'm so intrigued by Ann Lister and just her mind and everything. Um, I've got this book, like this gentleman, Jack book that I think the series is based off, but I haven't read this one yet. I'm going to dive into this very soon. If you guys want to check this out as well, I have a link um, in the description to where you guys can buy it. But yeah, Gentleman Jack, uh, I had to put Anne and Anne in number three because I absolutely love them. And number two, we have Juliet and Calliope from First Kill. I will spend the rest of my life trying to figure out how to kill you and every legacy like you. Oh man, I love them. I love them. And like I said, I had issues 
ranking these top four and there was just like little things that like put one above the, above the other. I feel like the only reason I didn't put uh, Julia and Calliope in number one was purely because of how we ended the season. Like not in a great place. <laughs> Which I have no doubt, you know, will play into some great storylines for season two and it, it will, you know, create great drama and great storylines. But I, I had to figure out a reason to rank these, so I put them at number two purely for that reason. <laughs> but my god, oh, talk about chemistry, talk about height difference. I just, the show was great. The, they were great as a couple. It was dorky. I, you know, if you guys watch my reaction videos, I definitely had some issues with different things. But as a whole, I loved it. You know, it's it was just a great fun watch. <laughs> Netflix better pick it up for a season. I swear to God, if they don't pick it up for a season two, there will be a riot. Like we've been watching those streaming numbers and they're good. They're good. So Netflix, hurry up. Where is our season two confirmation? Get your shit together. The number two was Juliet and Calliope from First Kill. So leading into my number one couple so far in 2022, I had to put Paige and AJ from the movie Crush. Oh God, I love them so much. It was just such an, an adorable film. Um, obviously because it's a movie, it leads itself to a happy ending. I just, uh, it just makes me happy, the movie. You know, I've watched it so many times since. It just, it, oh, I, I can't even put into words how much I enjoyed this, the movie, how much I enjoy them as a couple. It's so good. <laughs> so that's my top 10 couples from 2022. Let me know who's in your list in the comments below. I've done reactions to a few of these, so check out my channel if you haven't already for those reactions. If you're interested in seeing my live reactions to all these, well, to a few of these couples, I should say not all of them. But that is it from me today. I will see you all in my next video. Okay, bye.